I cover a lot of AI tools here, but what tools developers are actually using? So there are two very interesting surveys out this week. One is Pragmatic Engineer 2025 survey. And the second one is Artificial Analysis survey. The results of both of these surveys are very interesting and in some cases really contradictory, which shows you the tools people use depend on where they are in their career and where they're working. A pragmatic engineer team surveyed around 3,000 people or developers to be more precise. Artificial analysis surveyed about 1,000 people. So in both cases, the sample size is pretty low, but still the results are interesting. Okay, so first, in terms of the distribution of demographics or technical expertise, both of them look very similar. Majority in both cases are engineering and technical roles. And the distribution of where they work is also uniformly distributed. Although in the artificial analysis survey, they're more inclined towards large enterprises or individuals. Now this makes the analysis very interesting. So for programmatic engineers, they mostly surveyed experienced developers with five plus years experience. And they're mostly working in the back end with about 16% in front end or mobile development and some management and other roles. Okay, so in terms of responses, a majority have mentioned using one or more AI tools. There is a four person which are not using AI tools either because they didn't find them useful or because of the company policies or ethical reasons. Now, which tool they're using? Majority of developers are using GitHub Copilot, which was actually a little surprising for me because I think most of us are just exposed to Reddit and Twitter bubbles. But in real world, it seems like GitHub Copilot is still a widely used tool, followed by ChatGPT, Cursor, Gemini, or Claude and then Gemini. There is some interest in Windsurf as well, but it's a fraction of the other ones. Now we see a very similar trend, at least for the top three spots. So we have GitHub Copilot here, I think specifically talking about AI coding tools. So Cursor, Cloud Code, then Gemini Assist, Windsurf, and the rest of the other tools. Now keep an eye on Gemini in the Pragmatic Engineer Survey because its usage is not what you would expect. First, a note on GitHub Copilot. So they say in last year's survey, more developers mentioned using ChatGPT than GitHub Copilot. But now Copilot is the most used AI tool. And they have this plot which shows how the mention of a specific tool has changed from 2024 to 2025. GitHub Copilot is increasing in terms of the overall usage, but the mention is lower than the last year. For Cursor, Claude, the trend is upward. Gemini seems to be downward or static, which is not something you would expect because they have been releasing better and better models. Now, there is interesting correlation when it comes to the company size and the tool the developers are using. So if you look at medium to large companies, GitHub Copilot is being more widely used. For startups, they tend to be using Cursor, Claude, or ChatGPT a lot more. So it seems vendor lock-ins is playing a critical role when it comes to big enterprises. For smaller companies, they're usually a lot more nimble and they tend to experiment. Okay, so languages, TypeScript, Python are still the most widely used languages. They're very close to each other with Python being the most loved language, which is expected because I think everybody is trying to learn Python at this point. Most widely used tools of coding, so VS Code, JetBrains and IDEs like PyCharm is the second one. Cursor is the third one. Then Linear is on fourth, right? Now, Linear is great for keeping track of your tasks, right? The most disliked tools are Jira, Microsoft Teams, Confluence. If you have actually used any of one of these, this probably tracks. And the reason people don't like these are they are slow, complex, buggy, bloated, painful, and all the other stuff on the list. Now there are other stuffs regarding version control and what CI CD pipelines people use. So I'm not gonna go into more details on here, but there were a couple of interesting comments regarding Gemini. Gemini is the only tool for which company size seems irrelevant. Gemini is mentioned only by around 8% of respondents from the largest companies to smallest. And uh, this is very curious 
why are some models popular with small companies but not Google? And you actually see the usage is static according to the pragmatic engineer survey. Now there have two different guesses. One is that Gemini comes with Google Workspace. So people who are using Google Workspace tend to use Gemini as well. So that would explain the vendor lock-in component. And then some of the usage could be coming from Android developers. But this is in contrast to if you look at the survey from artificial analysis. So here, in terms of the models people use, Gemini and OpenAI models are the most widely used, followed by Anthropic, DeepSeek, and then Meta Llama and some of the other models. But if you look at the changes model usage over the last year, Gemini is crazy. It went from 31% all the way up to 80%, almost 50% change. OpenAI hasn't changed much. Claude has also covered some ground, which is really good. And then DeepSeek, along with some of the other Chinese models as well. Another surprising thing is market share for XAI, which now has about 31% increase over last year. Okay, which API providers people are using? So OpenAI is at the top, followed by Google and Microsoft, because they are hosting a number of different models. And then surprisingly, Grok is higher than Amazon bedrock which is very interesting and if you look here again for inference google has i think got a lot better adoption over the last year which surprisingly does not show up in the pragmatic engineer survey again as i said in the beginning it's a relatively small cohort but the trends that we see is github copilot is the most widely used which personally i was not expecting actually i should say coding assistant vs code is the most widely used ide now, here is some quick summarization of the findings from the artificial analysis report. 45% people are using AI in production, while 50% are prototyping or exploring AI use cases. And the majority of the uses are for engineering and research and development. Interestingly, Google, XAI, DeepSeek have gained share, while Meta and Mistral are losing share. Now, for Meta, it makes sense. Mistral, I think they also dropped the ball. Another interesting thing is that it seems like companies and developers are diversifying. So in 2024, on average, developers were using about three models. Now it has gone up to almost five models. And this makes sense. You don't want to use the same model for every application. So for some application, you need much smaller specialized models. For the other ones, you probably need reasoning models. So for example, if you're doing some sort of planning, right? So it would make sense to use different models for different applications. It will improve your latency performance and also reduce cost. And then there is an interesting trend that 32% of respondents favor building, 27% buying and 25% a hybrid approach. I would suspect for enterprises, most probably they tend to either buy or use a hybrid approach. For startups, they are probably just building things. And the last point is that organizations are actually open to using Chinese models if they are hosted outside of China, which would make sense. Last year, I think the trend was that nobody in regulated industries at least trusted Chinese models, even if they had the weights open source. And I think it's just a misunderstanding of how these things actually work. But now it seems like people are a lot more open to using models coming out of China, which is a good thing for the community because to be frank at the moment, the open source models are only coming out of China. Anyways, I actually found this very useful and interesting. And do let me know which models and tool you are using in your own workflows. I'll be highly interested. I'm going to put links to both of these articles in the video description. And I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.